Hey everybody, welcome back to the Robert Cheek Show. This is a bonus show. This is out at my mom's house where I grew up. My mom still lives here. Uh, my dad lives elsewhere, also in Corvallis. But this is where my mom, my dad, my sister, my two brothers, and I grew up and where I lived for 18 years, then another two years after I moved out the first time. So uh, I want to, for fun, go check out my old bedroom. It's been virtually left alone for the last 10 years. I mean, I come and go here and there. I come pick up old photos and I do other things and I, I check things out. So I want to go take a look at what it, what it looks like and show you what it looks like. Uh, you you kind of get a feel for maybe who I am or what I was like as a kid just by uh, taking a trip down memory lane in my room. So again, this is Robert Cheek Show bonus footage. It's not a regular episode. Just a short little visit down memory lane. It is Friday, July 3rd, 2009, out of my mom's house, just finished pick, picking cherries, and now let's go, uh, let's go check it out. All right. As you can tell, I was a big fan of wrestling. In fact, I got extremely close to getting a job with the World Wrestling Federation, now World Wrestling Entertainment. And I all but had a job with them in 2001. Um, everything was kind of locked up and basically said uh, that I was going to be hired and things like that. And uh, something I'd worked, I worked for 13 years to try to achieve from when I was 8 years old to 21. I got all the way up to the uh, corporate office of the World Wrestling Federation and uh, was taking all the right steps doing all the right things, just like I do with everything else that I do, and got so close uh, to the point where they were calling me from the World Wrestling Federation headquarters in Stanford, Connecticut, calling me at my house in Arizona where I lived, setting things up. Uh, things didn't work out uh, at the last minute, and um, I was devastated and didn't know what to do with my life. And that's when I came home. I left uh, where I was living, Arizona, came back home, and that's where I met uh, up with my childhood friend Jordan Baskerville who got me into bodybuilding and my life has been changed forever as a result So thanks Jordan Baskerville for that. Got to give a shout out there. Uh, let's look around uh, For fun a bunch of wrestling stuff spider webs. You can see it's been a while since I've been here uh, a bunch of awards. I was a five sport athlete in high school uh, Physical best uh, that's funny since now my Slogan is personal best. Physical best. Wow. Spider webs all over the place. <laughs> Michael Jordan. A lot of athletic role models. A little collage. And I want to talk about something. Um, running the risk. The, uh, the known risk of sounding you know, um, arrogant to some degree, and I, I don't mean it to sound that way at all. In fact, I say it with complete humility and all the humility in the world. But sometimes people ask, well, Robert, why you? You know, seven billion people on the planet, why are you the face of vegan bodybuilding? There's obviously thousands of members on your vegan bodybuilding website. There's all these people with uh, better genetics uh, and, all, and better know-how in the gym and have been doing it longer and this and that. Why are you... Why are you the face of vegan bodybuilding? And it's certainly not because I know how to lift weights and eat better than other people. That's, I mean, that's just uh, silly, uh, preposterous. It has nothing to do with that. But what I think it has to do with is right up there. And, uh, you know, from a kid, this is, this is what I used to put around my room. You know, I, I demanded, I demanded excellence from myself. It's something that, it's almost like an intangible, like, I think it can be taught, but at the same time, it's, if you have it, you have it, and you've just got it, and so, that's what I equate to a lot of the success that I have. I mean, I produce movies, and I, have no, I know nothing about producing movies, but I'm there, like, at awards, getting awards for, as a film producer, because I... I just, I know how to demand excellence in what I'm doing. I know how to believe in myself. I know how to go after it. And that's what almost got me in the World Wrestling Federation. That's what got me to a movie producer. That's what got me um, 
to be nominated many years as, as his favorite vegan athlete in North America is what got me all these different award type things. It's what got me this phone call. <laughs> it's, my, it's my sister, I better answer it, hold on. Hey, Flonk. Yeah, you know, I just stopped picking cherries and I'm doing a quick Robert Cheek bonus show in my bedroom um, showing like all the different posters on my wall and things like that. So you're actually, you're on camera right now. I, I, I don't stop recording. So uh, um, can I call you right back? Let me call you right back. Let me see if the restaurant's still open and I'll, I'll call you back in just a little bit. All right. Thanks. Bye. All right. So uh, where were we? I'm talking about, I'm talking about this. I learned this from somebody back in high school. In fact, I think I was, I was kind of, I was born with that attitude, but I put the words together from my friend, coach, mentor, teacher, John Bullock, who, who really taught me to demand excellence. And in high school, I embraced that. And you could say I embraced it before that. Back before I was even in high school, I, I wanted to be the best at everything, academically, athletically, etc. And I went through periods where I struggled, but then I went through periods where I set academic records, where I set physical fitness records, where I, I led the school, fastest mile, this or that, whatever. I just found ways to do that. And that's why I think out of 7 billion people, there's loads of people with, with better genetics, better opportunities, who've been doing it way longer, or vegan bodybuilding. But I have this demand excellence mentality that I have to go all the way. I have to put everything that I have into it. That's why I work 12 hours a day. That's why I work 15 hours a day, 18 hours a day, seven days a week. That's why I, I, I have travel six months out of the year, fully funded, paid for, whatever, because I, I work so much for that opportunity. That rather than sitting and watching the travel channel from home, I make the travel channel happen for my life. I, I go out there and I do really uh, fun things and productive things and phenomenal things with my own life and I love it. And uh, a lot of it started right here. So, uh, yeah, it's cool to, <laughs> to come back. We got another one over there. Those were defining words, but it, it was something before that. Something innate, intrinsic, inherent that I always had, always believed in this ability to be exceptional and remarkable and outstanding at something. And I've carried that from elementary school to middle school to high school to post high school, college, um, all the way from running NCAA collegiate cross country to doing a complete 180 and becoming a bodybuilder and taking it, you know, as high as, high as I can. And I'm um, still going up, still going up. So 10 years into it, really trying to pioneer vegan bodybuilding into this modern era of fitness and health. and. Uh, so far, so good. Um, a long way to go, but uh, some of these humble beginnings remind me of, of uh, the potential and the work that's still ahead. So uh, it's good to come home. It's the Robert Cheek Show. Robert Cheek Show bonus. Signing off. I got to go uh, call my sister back. We're going to go out to eat at Nearly Normal's fantastic vegetarian restaurant here in Corvallis, Oregon. And... Uh, uh, I did finish picking cherries for now. Got about $100 worth of retail value cherries. You just, that's how much they'd cost in a store in less than an hour for free. And they're really nice. So, all right. We'll catch you next time. Have an outstanding weekend. Have a great day. And make your personal best every day. Thank you very much. See ya. Bye.